Hello web developers, uh, welcome to another project walkthrough for the Seattle University Web Development Certificate Program. This is the Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development Project for uh, Intro to CSS. So this is the Cascading Style Sheets assignment. It's the very first assignment where we're working with CSS. So in this project walkthrough, we're going to look at how to complete the steps of this assignment. Uh, it's important uh, before you start working on this project for real to read some of the resources, but watching this project walkthrough uh, might help you understand some of the things that you're going to read about and all of the resources um, that you've been given about CSS. So um, we are starting out on the project repository uh, here in the SU Web Dev account. And the first thing that we always want to do is fork this project. So I'm going to fork it into my account. And when this finishes, I will have my own copy of this entire repository. So that's the first step. And that's a GitHub feature to copy a repository like that. Then I'm going to look through this repository and just kind of see what's there. So this is a good thing to do whenever we start a project. So here we've, we can see that we've got some files. We've got a, uh, an index.html and a styles sheet of the readme file, the license file, which we don't really need to pay too much attention to. It's the license for uh, the project. Um, we also have uh, a git ignore file that git uses so that it won't include certain files like these files that crop up on Macs a whole bunch. Um, and then of course we have uh, the images directory and inside of here we have some different uh, images that we could use. Uh, so that is cool. Um, we are then uh, going to um, look at the readme file which is shown here on the repository homepage. And we can read that uh, what we're going to do here is format uh, the present visual presentation for a poem um, by Samuel T Taylor Coleridge. It's the poem Kubla Khan, which uh, is a classic work of, of poetry. Uh, so um, it should be fun to lay this out. Uh, this is also public domain. It's, it's quite old. So um, we'll be able to, uh, you know, use it without, without incurring any wrath of any copyright protection. Um, uh, we do not need to edit the HTML file except for to add the link element in the index.html. Um, so uh, we don't need to change the actual HTML file at all, but we do need to add this link element in to reference the external style sheet. Uh, we need to create styles that help visually group the information on the page. Uh, we need to remove bullets. Uh, we need to use at least one background image. We need to use at least two fonts on the page. We need to use margin and padding to control spacing on the page. Uh, we need to use line height to help make text easily readable. We need to use background color and color uh, to alter the appearance of a section. And we need to size the image on the page appropriately. So this is um, definitely uh, a lot of stuff to get done. Um, we've been given the, the index file and the styles sheet and the images, so um, we can work on that. And then of course there are some stretch goals, uh, and I will um, return to these at the end and we, we talk about those a little bit, but we're not actually going to work through those stretch goals in this video. So the next thing that we need to do is set up our workspace on Code Envy so that we can uh, work on this. Uh, this. This video is assuming that you're doing your work on Code Envy. If you're working on a local environment or anywhere else, you, you would be setting things up there. When you open up your environment in Code Envy, it will often look like this. Um, a quick tip, you can minimize this uh, console here by just clicking minimize there and it will come back anytime you press into processes here or events or debug. But um, but you can always uh, give yourself a little more space that way very easily. Now, to um, we want to import the project to our workspace. So you click workspace and then import project. We want to import from GitHub. And I'm going to use the load repo button. Since I've already authenticated through GitHub, it's going to just load it up. If you haven't authenticated yet, um, you might need to authenticate. Um, it is uh, worthwhile to know that... Um, if, if you are trying to authenticate and you can't, if you have a pop-up blocker, you might check that 
you need to allow pop-ups from Code Envy and then refresh this entire interface and go through the process of clicking Load Repo again. And once you allow the pop-ups, it should show you the GitHub authentication page and connect no problem for you. Um, but I've seen some people have some issues uh, with that. So we're going to scroll down here to the Watts 3010 CSS uh, project. That will show up in your list of projects once you've authenticated. And I'm going to import that into the workspace. Uh, I've already pre-selected blank for this workspace, so I'm going to keep that, keep it like that uh, for this. And uh, now we can see that we have this folder, watch the retin CSS, and we can see that it is, uh, it contains all the files that we expected to. So if we look at the index.html, we open up that file, and we can see that there's one to do in this file to add the style sheet, and otherwise we don't want to change any of the of the CSS, we can just, uh, or of the HTML, we can just um, leave the HTML as it is. Um, if we open up the styles.css, we can see that it only has one style defined. Um, and if we preview the index.html by right clicking and selecting preview, then you can see that we get the poem in this vanilla HTML. It looks a lot like our previous HTML project. Um, there's no styles applied. It's uh, all the content is here and everything is functional, but it doesn't look very pretty. So we want to make it look more pretty, right? Um, we can uh, go back here and just add in the link to uh, the style sheet. So what we want to do there is uh, write a link tag and um, link tags are self-closing so we can put the slash at the end of it or not it's it's not really required um with a link tag we always put in the rel which is the relationship that this document has and it is a style sheet and then um we put in an href and that is to styles.css and if i did that all correctly then um, we should be able to refresh this and we should see the H1 turn green, which it did turn green. So that means that we now have our style sheet linked up. If we go back here into code envy and in styles.css, if we change this to be red, uh, then, and it saves it, and then we come here and we refresh, then we can see that the H1 is now red. So this is, uh, this is how we can affect the visual appearance of this page is by writing CSS styles. And um, so there are a few things to be aware of, and you've already encountered these things in materials that you've gotten, but let's just make really clear to point out that this right here, this H1 is a selector. And this selector right now is selecting an entire uh, HTML element so every h1 tag will have the color red this color is a property and red is a value so that's how we define styles is with sets of properties and values we could use um, the property text decoration and set it to say underline now this is not necessarily a good practice uh, because it becomes confusing with links but if we do that and refresh the page here then you can see that we now have an underline under the h1 so we can stack up as many properties as we want uh, we could also give it a background and this is a really good way of um, seeing how your elements on the html page are laying out because when you give something a background you really get a better idea of how the browser sees this element. So this element, even though the text is only this long, the element itself, because this is a block level element, it stretches 100% of the width and it goes all the way across. Um, we could add backgrounds to all the different elements on our page and just get an idea of how things are laying out if we wanted to. Um, we can also uh, change around whatever these styles you know whatever styles we want them to be so um, maybe uh, we don't want it to actually uh, be a color red maybe instead we want to define the font family we need to have at least two font families in in play here and so for that we could maybe say Arial 
Helvetica Sans Serif. And what that is is a list of fonts. So this is the way the font family property works, is that you give it a list of fonts. And um, here Code Envy is actually previewing us what these fonts look like. And you can see that I've chosen fonts that are very similar. And um, if we co come back here and we refresh, you'll notice that the H1 is now in uh, Arial and uh, the other text is still in Times New Roman, which is the default font that this web browser is using. So, um, so, we, can, so we now have two fonts um, in use on our page, which if you'll recall, is uh, one of our requirements here. So we've already fulfilled one of the requirements by simply uh, modifying and creating the font family um, property here on this uh, H1 element. Um, what if we wanted all of these headings to be uh, in Arial and then let the body text be in Times New Roman? That's fairly common. You can see that we have uh, an H1, we have H2s here. We also, um, there's another H2. And then those are, that's all of them that we have. We know that the headings actually go from H1 all the way to H6. So we could select multiple elements and we could uh, add, which is really adding multiple selectors to this uh, CSS style definition by simply using commas. And we could just list out all of the headings. And that way, any heading that we use, even ones that we haven't used before, if we use those in the future, then they'll all have the Arial Helvetica Sans Serif font family. So now if we refresh, we can see that our headings have all become Arial um, or Helvetica or Sans Serif, depending on what's supported by the user's computer. But the body text is still all uh, Times New Roman. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that, and that will be kind of a nice effect for um, our fonts. So that's cool. Um, we also uh, can write other styles. If we return to these requirements, um, we've, we've completed this first uh, requirement. So then we need to create styles that help visually group the information on the page. Uh, so if we look at here, we have the title, we have more information, which has this picture and um, this text, and then um, these uh, links and everything. Then we have the title of the poem. And it, when we look at it, it looks like it's all just kind of down the page. And when we look at it in Code Envy, it can be a little bit difficult to kind of understand really what, you know, what we're doing here, right? But, um, but if we look, we have a header element that is uh, defined up here. And this header element is, um, contains the title and, and who it's by. Then we have um, an aside here right? And then we have uh, this text, which is actually completely misleading. So let's go ahead and change this. Um, and we can uh, make this a poem. Um, and that way we have a uh, we have the poem down here. So we have things kind of clearly labeled exactly what we need with the, the overall page has the name of the poem. Um, then the aside has uh, more information and then, um, and then this, uh, this section has a heading for poem. So um, let's see, we could break these up. That feels like we have three major sections, right? Three major parts. Um, there's another way to kind of look at this. If we right click and click inspect here, it will open up our Google developer tools. And um, you can change how these tools open up by uh, clicking these three dots and you can, or not these three dots, sorry, these three dots. And you can choose where you want these, tool, where you want these tools to, to show up. I like to have them um, on the side for something like this. And uh, you can give yourself a little room here. And, um, and when you have these tools open, a few cool things happen. Uh, first of all, um, it disables the cache in your browser so that you know that you're going to get fresh uh, information from the server every time. Second of all, it lets you look at all the elements in your HTML 
And when you look at them this way, it becomes a lot easier to kind of see that I have an HTML tag and then inside of that I have a head. Inside the head I have a bunch of stuff here, but I also have a body and inside the body I have all of this stuff. And inside the header I have this, inside the aside I have all of this, and inside of the section I have all of this, and then inside of the footer I have all of this. So we can um, think of these header, aside, section, content, and footer as being like the three main areas that we, um, that we can uh, work on. Then we have comments in here that, that reinforce the, uh, the things that we're supposed to style out on this page. Um, so what we can do is we could come back here and we could write styles to just get going on developing these styles so that we're breaking up the page visually. And um, I actually just wrote the wrong thing. There we go. Uh, so we wanna select this header tag, and this is an HTML tag up here, um, header, right? And so we're gonna leave that like that, and then, um, and then we're just gonna say background purple, right? And then we're going to, um, there's an aside, and we're gonna say background pink. And then there is the section, and we're just gonna say background green. And then footer, and we're gonna say background uh, purple, green, pink, blue. And all, the whole goal with this is just to see those areas on the page. And so now if we refresh, we can see these areas on the page and see how they break up. And so now we can actually start styling these areas and it will um, allow us to create some visual definition on this page. So now that we have these parts all broken out, we can kind of start to see how we might be able to group the information on the page visually, right? We have a header, we have an aside, we have the content section, and then we have the footer. And notice here that the footer of the content section is blue, and then there's a space, and then there's the actual footer as well. It's because our CSS has targeted uh, just the footer tag. And so it says background blue. We could um, alter that by noting that um, down here we have uh, a footer that has a class content footer, and then we have another footer that has a class page footer. And so we could target those separately so we could turn this, instead of selecting the HTML element, we could uh, select content dash footer, and then we could select page dash footer here and make this one background yellow. And that way uh, we should be able to refresh and see that now the page footer is yellow the content footer is blue, the content is green, the aside is pink, and the header is purple. So technically, I mean, we have definitely created styles that help visually group the information on the page, but it is not very aesthetically appealing. So um, it's very useful to start out by adding these background colors, but it's often uh, much um, better to you know, come in and modify them. And I like to modify them when I'm, when I'm trying to build a style and I, I'm not too sure exactly where I'm going to go. I like to just modify them right here um, in uh, the, the Chrome developer tools. And so I'm actually going to uh, make the margin on this uh, pretty big. So I'm gonna make this like three rim. I'm gonna use rim um, and that's gonna be my top margin and on the rights and lefts, I don't want there to be as much margin, so I'm just gonna make it one rim. And that's gonna kind of inset that title. And then I'm going to um, 
take off the uh um I'm going to then take off the uh background, the purple background. I think this text here is too far apart. And if I go in here, I can see that it's because when I hover over this H1 tag, I can see that it has too much margin. So I want to actually uh, restyle the H1 tag that shows up inside of the page header there. So I'm also going to uh, come in here and make a new style and I'm going to call it uh, header H1, and then I'm going to um, just say margin zero, uh, I'm just gonna say margin bottom zero. And that, um, that took out the, the margin bottom. And then here on this paragraph, I also have um, some margin. So I can make another new style by pressing the plus button there. Say header P to select that paragraph and say margin top zero. And notice how that tightened these up really nicely there. Now what's cool about uh, Chrome DevTools is that I can actually click and select this I'm just gonna hit Command C to copy, and then I can go right over here into Code Envy, and I can actually paste the style right in, and it will paste in looking really nice. So I did that header P, and I did the header H1. And I can modify these anywhere. So, and then I also altered just the header, so, Notice here I turned off background purple and I added this margin here so I can just copy this out and go back into Code Envy and instead of background purple I'm just gonna set that margin up. And um, you can hit Shift Tab to outdent. So I wanna line all these things up so I'm gonna get rid of and re-space, it's a two-space indentation here is what I'm going for. Um, you can actually choose to indent however you want, um, but you should always keep it consistent, you know. In fact, it might just be easier if I just let it have the bigger indent indentation because that way when I try to use my automated tools they'll line it up a little more easily there. So so what I've got now is I've got the, the top in a way that's not too bad. Um, I think I might wanna come back and change how that looks a little bit more, but right now for spacing and stuff, I think that's cool. Um, this more information section, this is kind of like, you know, in a side box. And so I want to, um, I wanna play with making it um, lay out a little bit differently. So I think one thing that I want to do is change the size of this image. And so notice that when I select this, it automatically gives me an element style, or if I hit the plus button here, it's going to, to give me just image. And I'm going to select the image that is only inside of an aside. So aside space IMG selects the image tags that are inside of aside elements. And I'm going to just say width, is um, let's start out with 60 px so that makes it really tiny what if we say 160 px that's about the width that I think would be good there right um, so we're gonna do that and then um, I'm gonna say height auto just so that if it you know if this changed at all it would um, it would resize the height and keep everything in perspective um, and then I'm going to uh, actually use um, I think I think I think now we can also uh, just work on that aside but this image is still kind of notice how it's still like the text is all off to the side of it so what this image needs to do is this image needs to float to one side or the other. And I think we want to make it float to the right. So I'm going to say float 
right. And what's going to happen there is that that image is going to float off to the right-hand side and is going to allow everything else to wrap up around it. And if we changed the width of this, you'll notice that the image would still be off to the right-hand side and things would still be able to flow around it, right? Um, so this is pretty good, except that notice now the image comes out of the box here, right? And so we need to fix that um, as well. So this is some very simple positioning stuff. We'll explore more advanced layout techniques later on, but just to get these images to be able to go in nicely, um, or you know any other elements that you wanted to apply this to, you could. Um, well, let's let's talk about um, how to do this. So what's happening here is that the image is overflowing out of the aside container, which is pink in the background, and it's overlapping then with the section that contains the poem. So that's this section here that contains the poem is overlapping with this section here, the aside. And you notice how in De DevTools, when I hover over these, I can see the backgrounds shaded for me, as well as any uh, margins and padding and things like that. Um, so what I need to do is get this section to sort of bump down below that image. And so in order to do that, um, I need to actually apply a style on the section. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually copy this image style that I wrote and put it in my style sheet because I don't want to lose this. This is good style that I wrote. And if I refresh the page, you'll notice that everything goes back to normal. Anything that you do in the inspector doesn't actually change the files. It just allows you to see what the styles would look like there. But we still need to paste these in. So I'm going to go down here below my aside and paste in the styles for the aside image. And you notice everything lined up well because I used that default um, indentation length. And so that's saved. And now if I come here and refresh it, you're gonna see that it looks like it did before because now that style is saved. So what I need to do now is actually add a, a style property to the section here. So this section, um, if I add a clear property and set that to both, you notice that it bounces down below the actual image. And then if I hit tab, I can write another property and I can just say margin top and set that to one rim and that doesn't seem to be enough. So for some reason, oh, it's, it's not actually, I haven't actually overcome the distance of the image there. So if I put it up to four or five or six or 10, so I don't really like doing that. And so I'm actually gonna turn that off. I don't wanna, don't wanna mess with that, but I do like this clear both. That bumps it down there so that I have some uh, spacing there. And then if I don't like this spacing, because if this gets very narrow, um, that image might get a little bit, you know, on the nose there, um, I could add a little more spacing to that image. So let me add the clear both back into uh, the style for this section. I'm gonna leave um, the background here for now, the background to be green. And um, and then I'm going to, uh, so if I refresh this, then I should see what I see there. Yep, so it stayed there. I can turn off the background and things are starting to look pretty normal here. If I go to the aside and I turn off the background there, I can, I can kind of see that things are looking pretty normal. Um, but I feel like this aside, uh, could be a little bit um, better. It seems a little bit wide there. So maybe if I set the width to be, say, 50% of the page, it would make it look a little more normal. I think that does help a little bit. Um, so I'm going to put that into the aside. I also feel like maybe instead of a pink background, what if we had a border that was like one pixel uh, solid black and that's good but notice how everything is kind of really close up against that black line there so maybe 
if I um if I said what if that had a padding and we just set that to be one rim padding and that would actually help it be nice. So it's actually, notice that now it's taking up more than 50% of the space because if we look here at our box model, you know, the, the width affects the content width. So the padding actually adds some extra pixels. So it's slightly more than 50% of the page. But it looks pretty decent, and we can um, we can resize and kind of see how things would resize. And there's some spots where it doesn't look that good, but in general, it's looking pretty decent. Um, we could kind of come up with a max width because notice that it really stops looking good when it gets over about 979 pixels there. So. If we take it back to about here, where it looks good, that's about 756 pixels. So if I come back over here to the aside, and I say max width to 756 pixels, and then I say width is 50%, what that says is make the width 50%, but if it gets to be the max width, then um, don't make it get any wider. And then, um, we can also add that padding back in so that um, so that we have padding on our aside. And we could get rid of the pink background because we don't need that anymore. Um, and then if we come here and we refresh, we can see that this is looking a little bit more normal. Now notice how this word kind of does still get close to the image. And so it might be good for us to inspect that image and here we could add a little margin of say just 10 pixels around the image and that would just make sure that everything always gives the image a little bit more space so notice how things don't get so tied up against the image anymore right so I think that's a good change to make so let's go ahead and just go back in here and we're just going to add um, margin 10 pixels to the image. Now why use pixels instead of rims? Well, because I think we want to make, it's it's okay to be a little more specific about that. Um, it's a very small amount of space and we want to define like that very small amount of space. We don't ever want that to become a really large amount of space. Um, so we'll do it that way. Uh, you could certainly use a different measurement. You could still use rims if you wanted to, say 0.1 rim or something like that would, would give you pretty similar Oh, that was 9.1 rim. But 0.1 rim would give you a pretty similar effect there. So, um, or even 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5, you know. So you can, you can feel free to experiment with those things however you like. Um, and of course, the visual design and everything is, is definitely your game, and, and you, should, you should play with that as much as you want. So we've got these sections sort of... Um, divided up. I think a thing that's really common to do um, might be for the footer, we could put a line across the top. And to do that, um, we could inspect the footer. We want to select the footer tag. And then here on page footer, we could say border top and maybe say two pixels. Um, and we could actually define this as a shade of gray in a really easy way to define a shade of gray is to use RGBA, and 000 is RGB for black, but then we can put in um, some level of opacity, which will turn it sort of gray. So if we say 0 0.6, for example, then um, and solid, then you'll notice that, that that actually looks more gray. And I'm going to turn off the background yellow. you notice that that actually looks pretty gray. Um, we can also do like a padding top style and say uh, like give it two rim so that that line doesn't get too close to the text and it looks kind of nice that way um, and then we can just copy out those two lines and paste them into our style sheet uh, under page footer here so that's cool and I think it's also probably worthwhile to take out the background green in the section um, we have the clear both uh, 
And I think if we refresh here, we'll see that the page is um, starting to come together. Oh, we still have some background colors in here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, content footer, we probably don't need it to really have a background. Um, so let's just save that and we will, those things look pretty decent. So now we could uh, move on to, um, so at this point, you know, we've got a good start on that, but we're gonna keep improving that as we work on other stuff. But I want to work on removing the bullets on the lists um, because if the bullets don't help with readability, then why have them? So here, I kind of feel like the bullets do sort of help, but definitely in the poem here, the bullets do not help us with readability. And down here, it's arguable that we don't need these. Um, but let's at least get rid of them on the poem, and then you can decide whether or not you want to get rid of them on other places. So if we click in here to the unordered list that has the poem, you'll notice that we can make a new style in ul.poem. That, that's totally a good selector for this. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. And if we just say list style type none, then all of those um, bullets go away. But notice that it's still indented um, like a poem. We might not want that. So um, if we hover over this, you can see that in the left side of that screen where it's highlighted green is the padding. And if, if we look down in the box model here, you notice that the padding has 40 on the left side and nothing else all around it. So we could override that by defining padding left to be zero. And then all of our lines really um, push over to the left. And this is looking a lot better now. So I'm going to grab um, this UL poem style and I'm going to put it into code envy here uh, below the section style. And I'm going to save that and come back and refresh. And I should see that my changes are going to be permanent now. And they are. So that's looking uh, really good so far. Um, the next thing on the list is to use at least one background image somewhere on the page. So here we have several background images that are available. I think I'm going to use this one on the page. I think I'm just going to make this the background of the HTML so that uh, everything else shows up on top of it. Um, so I can note. I want to note that the, the path to get to this it's in the images directory and then it's in hiking the sand dunes .jpg. and so I'm going to add a style. Um, and I'm just going to put this at the bottom of the file and I'm going to say um, for HTML. So I'm actually going to style the HTML tag because that that tag contains everything on the page. So if I style that it will take up the full viewer, the view, full viewport width um, no matter what. And I still have a ton of flexibility for sizing and, and changing everything around it so that I can make it lay out however I want to. Um, so this is a good place if you're trying to do like an entire, you know, viewport wide background, uh, styling the HTML tag is, is a pretty good way to do that. So we're going to add this background image property and that is going to take a URL and the URL is rel is a path relative to our CSS file. So this CSS file is in the main directory of our website. Then we have the subdirectory images, so we need to type that in, and then we use a slash to denote the end of the subdirectory name. And then we want to type in the name of that image file, hiking the sand dunes.jpg. And that should make the image show up for us. So let's see if we actually successfully got the image to show up for us. Yay! So the image showed up for us, which is great, um, but it's not quite doing exactly what we want. So we've got a couple things going on here. First of all, it looks really good up here, but then notice that here the image repeats. And actually, if we were to close our dev tools, um, We'd, we'd see that even when things got wider, the image is repeating. And if we could pull this wide enough to actually 
have the image, we'd notice that it was repeating horizontally and vertically. So we want to make sure that we, um, that we don't have the image repeating. And so what we can do is we can use dev tools to help us find the right way for this to look. So um, I think what we need to do is we need to set the background uh, repeat to be no repeat. And so now you'll notice that it just cuts off. So that's okay. Um, and then I think we need to say background size cover. And what that's going to do is um, make sure that it it's uh, that that it gets stretched to cover the background. But you have to you have to spell background correctly. So I fix that now. And so now you notice that the the entire image is actually stretched. So if I if I close this, then you'll see that um, is actually a page that has the image is made much much larger, but it's also much more interesting to kind of look at, right? Um, so we can. Uh, this is coming together really nicely, and if we look here, we've we've now. Um, we've got one background image. We have two fonts on the page. Um, we've been using margin and padding to control spacing on our elements so far. Um, line height we could use uh, to make text more easily readable in some places. Um, and of course, background color and color we could use. Um, and we did size the image appropriately, right? Um, so this is um, this is really starting to look really really good uh, we could be doing more stuff like for example um, notice how the poem is pushed so close up against the side here so we could um, we could definitely make it so that all of the this content could make more use of the page by adding just a uh, bit of padding to the body tag itself so below this HTML we could say body and we could say padding left is for rim and if we did that then when we refresh we'll notice that everything sort of scoots over and we're able to kind of see everything really good oh we didn't we didn't commit our final changes um to the to the background image so um let's fix that so that was background repeat no repeat and background size uh, cover. So if we set those and we refresh, we should get something that looks more like what we expected before. Now, um, notice that when it goes over the over the uh, darker colors of the picture, this text is kind of hard to read, and it's also pretty tight together. I think we should do some work on this poem text, and I encourage you to um, keep playing with the poem text, but but a couple things that I thought that I would um, uh, mention, we could go in here and inspect, and we could modify this style a bit. Um, so the first thing that we could do is we could say um, uh, line height, and we could set it to, to some number. And um, line height is just a number that represents sort of a multiplier of the line height. So if we say 1.5, you notice how these lines stretch out more. If we make it just 0.5, you notice how they get all jumbled up. And if you select, you can see how the, the line height is all kind of crazy. If we make it like 3.5, they're very, very, very widely spaced, right? Um, so we might want to just stick with maybe 1.5 or maybe like 1.8. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. Um, we, uh, we also might want to just make the font size a bit larger, right? So we could, um, we could start out with two rim. That seems awfully large. Um, what about 1.2 rim? Um, oh, that's a nice, that's a bigger size, but it's still, still pretty nice. Um, 
That's looking pretty good. But we still have the problem with the uh, with the darkness, and, and especially like on the footer here too, we have this darkness. Um, we could do a couple of different things with this, but I think since we know that Kubicon and more information will always kind of be up there, I think we could uh, just, actually what we could do is we could make it so that the body here, instead of using padding to offset stuff, we could switch this to margin and we could say the margin on the body is zero on the top and, and bottom, but is going to be uh, two rim on either side. Or no, is going to be auto on either side. And then this is a this is a, a web design trick. The width we could say we'll make this seventy five percent of the browser width. So that and what what's going to happen is that when we make the margin on the left and right side auto, then it's going to make it so that um, the the content centers itself in the window. So if we go here and refresh we can kind of see that that's what's happened. Now, our content doesn't go all the way across, but if you look at this line here, you notice how that line is centered in the window. So by making that change, we've done that, but we've also made it possible that we could put a background color on here that was RGBA, and you know, black is 000, but white is 255, 255, 255, and then we could set that to be like, 0.3 opacity and that's how the RGB a colors work and then um, when we refresh that you'll notice that we actually have a um, a nice little white box that kind of goes all the way um, down and makes it so that that text stays readable even when it's over the darker parts but we can see the image through it which is pretty cool now this box could also probably use a bit of padding so if we just put like one rim of padding all the way around it with that padding property then we can get a slightly better spacing there so um, if we go through these requirements we have actually managed to sort of fulfill at the minimum all of these requirements I encourage you, if you're working on this, you can push this much, much further. You can do a lot more with this. You can keep tweaking styles, keep changing things, um, keep seeing what happens. Oh, I see now that we didn't actually commit our line height changes to the list uh, styles here. So we could say line height 1.8, I think is what we chose. Oh, and then uh, font size. Uh, 1.2 rim I think is what we chose there and so if we refresh yeah we've got that oh that looks beautiful now so nice and readable it's a pleasure um, we could change link colors you could use the hover attributes on links you could do a lot of different things to improve this page even further so keep playing with it um, experiment with different colors of text different colors of backgrounds things like that um, and uh, make it look good. Once you're all done, you'll go through the regular uh, commit and push process, which we'll do really fast here, where we just go um, right click on our project name there, say git commit. We want to commit, those are the two files that we've changed. We uh, want to say completed assignment, although I encourage you to commit and push whenever you walk away from the editor. You're going to make sure to check this box to push committed changes to origin master and then uh, say commit. And that will pull up our little window here that will let us know that it was committed. We successfully pushed it to origin. If we come back here and we look at our, um, we refresh our page, then you can see that we've completed the assignment. We have the latest commit is showing up properly. And of course we can go into our settings here and switch it so that it shows the master branch on GH pages. And once it does that, we can click through and it does take sometimes a few minutes to show up, but it will eventually show us our page as we completed it 
ready for the world to see. So we can turn in this URL um, and complete the assignment. So that's been a walkthrough of the basic CSS assignment uh, for Watts 3010. Good luck uh, putting all of this together, and I look forward uh, to seeing your work online. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.